Today we are talking about Hueling and specifically I'm going to show you how to modify the throttle so it is no longer self-centering and it stays where you put it for that fixed throttle that fixed wing users have been asking for. Now to perform this modification you will need to strip your heel link down, remove the tension spring and then modify the throttle so it no longer moves by itself. Now there are two ways of doing this. One of them is to add a small washer on the gimbal but the better way is to use this 3D printed bracket that I have designed that replaces the standard bracket that comes included with the remote. Now I have put the STL file for this bracket in the description of this video and you would need to print that before doing this modification however if you didn't have access to a 3d printer you could actually just use the washer method however in my opinion it is not as good and how the washer method would end up over time is unknown now further to that I'm also at the end of the video going to show you another modification that I've done that replaces the gimbal control knob with a new custom 3d printed one that I have also designed for me this is just a little bit easier to hold compared to the the original one and it gives me a bit more finer control over it. So let's get on with it. If you find this video helpful please do consider subscribing to the channel. There is a button in the bottom right hand corner of every video. Also please don't forget to click the little bell and set this to all that way you'll receive updates on any new videos that we do release in the future. So the first thing we will need to do is remove the two grips on the side of the remote. These are held on with little plastic grips as well as some adhesive tape. To remove these you need to push them outwards away from the remote. The easiest way is to just prise it open from the back on the side and flip them upwards. Now these little clips are just sort of holding clips. They're not actually proper fitting clips so you do need to be a little careful but they will just pop free. The next thing you will need to do is remove the four screws from the front underneath where the grips were located and then remove the two screws from the holes on the rear of the heel link unit. The next thing you will then need to do is pop the casing open. Now the simplest way to do this is actually gently prise it apart from the side and prise the back end away from the front end. Now mine will come loose a little bit easier because it has been taken apart before. However, you do need to be very careful and I recommend using a plastic tool and not a screwdriver as I am. Once you then start getting it to unclip, you need to just gently pull it all the way around, being careful along the top especially and then the back end will pop off. It is worth noting that there are no cables between the back end and the front end but you do have the little speaker located at the bottom where its pins match onto the PCB so that is something to be aware of. Now just taking a look inside the unit the first thing you have is the battery power connector up here on the right hand side. You then have your gimbals located on each side of the remote controller. Your main battery in the centre with the GPS antenna located along the top. I strongly recommend disconnecting the battery before you do anything else at this point. Taking a close look at the gimbal we're going to modify, the first thing you need to do is remove this ribbon cable that goes to the board for the controller. Now you need to do this very very carefully because it is delicate and you simply do this by flicking up the little black lever on either side of the connector and then gently removing the cable. Once the cable is removed, the next thing you will need to do is remove the block that holds the gimbal in place on the right hand side. Now these two screws hold it down and once this is removed, it allows you to then actually get the spring tensioner on the right hand side out and then replace this block with the new one. Now it's worth noting you can do this without removing the top PCB, however if you do find it easier, you can do so. So what we actually need to do in the mod is replace the plastic bracket on the left hand side with my own custom designed one as per in the description and that allows you to actually tension the gimbal because when you remove the spring it's actually too loose with the original bracket and this one has a small adjustment screw that allows you to tension it on the shaft to make sure that throttle doesn't flop around. So what we need to do is remove this little clamp first of all. Once the screws are removed you're able to put a bit of pressure on the gimbal and withdraw the bracket out of the way. Now once the gimbal is actually loose this leaves you enough room to withdraw the spring tensioner mechanism from the right hand side. Now in this image it's actually already been removed. However what you can actually do is unclip the spring 
undo the lever from the little clip there, take the spring off, and you will need to remove that to take it out. Now, just to show you here, I've actually removed the gimbal, and this is the piece you will need to remove. You simply unclip the spring off the bracket and then lift the lever up out of the way, placing it safe because this won't need to go back in. Once the spring's removed, we can then fit the new 3D printed clamp assembly. Now this goes on one way with the little ditch going in towards the gimbal. You simply push it over the shaft, place it down in place into the hole, put the gimbal back into the hole on the right hand side, gently wiggling it about until it goes in. And then you can simply put a little bit of pressure on to make sure it's in place and then put the two retaining screws back in to hold it down. As you can see, we've got the two clamp screws in place with the adjustment screw located next to the one side. Now, this will tension how loose the gimbal is, and you can adjust this to get the feel as you like it. Now, once this is all done, you can simply flip it over and check the gimbal for preferred tension. And as you can see, I can simply move it up and down, and it will stay where I put it with no returning back to center. Now, you can still use the yaw as you would expect. However, it is simply just the up and down throttle that now stays in place. Now something I will add is you can actually do this mod without having a 3D printed replacement part. You can simply do the same thing by adding a 0.5mm washer onto the shaft on the gimbal and then refitting the existing clamp. Now again the reason you need to do this is when you remove the spring there's just not enough tension and the stick will flop around. You can then simply add the washer on, put the existing clamp back in place and this will then put some tension in place on the gimbal to ensure it stays where you put it. However, I will add that you do not have any adjustment when you do it this way and you are left with what you get rather than having the ability to adjust the little screw on that 3D printed bracket that I created. Now you could actually try a number of washers on this or use fiber washers. How they would hold up over time I don't know but this was the reason I actually designed the clamp because I wasn't 100% happy with how the washer performed and it still felt a little bit loose. But again, you simply put the washer on, put the clamp back in place, push it down, pop the screws in place, and that will then hold the stick and again, put it under tension to ensure that it doesn't move around. Once complete, you would simply then reassemble the remote controller and then perform the main stick calibration process again to make sure everything performs as expected doing both the main gimbal wheel as well as the main gimbal sticks and checking that they perform as expected in both the standard outputs and the SPAS outputs as well. And if you do get any problems with it, simply just perform the calibration again and everything should work as expected. Alongside this bracket, I have also designed a replacement gimbal wheel controller. Now this simply replaces the little metal half wheel with a plastic lever kind of mechanism. Now to fit this, you will need to remove the whole effect sensor board off the top, being very careful to ensure that you undo the ribbon cables. Once that is removed, you will need to remove the gimbal itself. Then you will need to remove this clamp assembly that holds it in place along the top. Now this is a very thin little plastic bracket which is held down with this little screw down here. It's also worth noting that there is a little LED behind this as well that is attached to the little ribbon cable up on the left hand side. Now there is a little spring mechanism on this so you do need to be very careful on how you take this apart and look at what you're doing as you do it. And the idea is you simply replace the metal wheel with the plastic one that I have created. So you would simply take it apart slowly, very carefully withdrawing it out of the case, removing the LED wire and then simply swapping over the parts from the existing one to the new one. Now as you can see here I had an orange test piece in place but the process is exactly the same as it is on the original one. You simply need to undo the little screw that is on the top, withdraw the small metal bits and the spring and then swap everything over onto the new plastic lever very carefully making sure that you do not break the little shaft on the end because it is extremely thin and very easy to damage and if you do do that your gimbal won't work at all. Now you can see everything is put back together and the lever is ready to reassemble and again 
make sure you test it and it is doing everything that you expect it to do once it's been refitted. And that is pretty much it for this video. Now, as I've said, I will put the links to the STL files for this in the description of the video. Also, please do take into account that performing this modification could affect your warranty and only do so if you are 100% confident in what you're doing. Finally, if you're interested in getting the healing system or the Cube Autopilot, please do check out 3DXR in the UK. They're one of the main dealers for this equipment and they hold most of this stuff in stock and they are available to ship all around. Around the world and there isn't a lot on these systems that they don't know so please do check them out and I'm sure they'll be able to help you that's it thank you for watching please do hit that subscribe button and I will do another video again soon